The scripture is from John 1, verses 35 through 51. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we said, uh, we are sharing in the uh, <clears throat> journey of the Gospel of John, and we are handing these out today along with a breakthrough prayer. We would invite you to pray at 6.29 a.m. and 6.29 p.m. as a way uh, to continue in your spiritual growth, because we know summer is kind of a, a more relaxed time, <clears throat> and so we hope that you will uh, read the first two chapters this week and then uh, two chapters each week until uh, it would probably go through the middle of August. And it's a good uh, practice for us to, to follow through this uh, wonderful book, uh, one of the four Gospels of Jesus. And uh, so hopefully you'll take that with you and, pick, and take them with you and read them this week and also just continue to share in that breakthrough prayer each day. <clears throat> Will you join me as we pray? <clears throat> Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of your word that forms us, that shapes us, that makes us who we are. We pray as we embark on this journey through the Gospel of John that you would speak to our hearts and lives, renew within us a passion, an experience, a joy of being in relationship with you. Help us to be enlightened by the power of your Holy Spirit in our hearts this day. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> All right, let's be honest, gentlemen. How many of you here like to ask for directions? How many men will love to ask for directions? You know, we really could expand that because I've, I've known some women who, you know, when you're lost, you really don't want to admit you're lost, right? I mean, you don't want to admit you're lost. You're kind of frustrated. You're also thinking, well, I'm incompetent. I should be knowing where I'm going. And yet when you're lost, you know, there's that whisper that says, well, why don't you just pull over and ask somebody? You know, but that's happened too, you know, you went and asked somebody and then they didn't give you the right directions anyway, and so you're more lost. And so, you know, this whole idea of giving directions, uh, you know, is an important piece of how we live our lives, so that even though we're lost, we hopefully can find somebody who can find you the way. Now, you know, I've now experienced recently, uh, you know, which is kind of a neat thing, like I've gone to the hospitals, for an example, and I've somewhat lost my way, or I'm asking a direction... And it's invariably that somebody there will 
say, you know what, I'll just walk you there. And I found that in stores as well, that they just walk you to the place. Now, isn't that, isn't that the kind of the neat way to do directions? Instead of asking directions and getting and trying to remember them, you know, having someone literally take you, literally take you to where you need to go. Well, we are embarking on, uh, this summer, a study, a sermon series around the Gospel of John. And as I said earlier, uh, we've given everybody a gospel, so we hope that you can put it in your purse or your pocket or yeah, take it with you if there's a place where you're you know, waiting in a waiting room or something or doing something or at home or your devotions, that you would begin to read uh, the gospel. And the first two chapters are what we're focusing on this morning. And then we hope that you'll read the episode three and four. So I guess I'm telling you to read four chapters before next Sunday and you'll be kind of ahead of us in, the, in that game. We also hope that you'll join one of our studies that, that are available for that as well. But you know, the Gospel of John is a, is a unique gospel. As we know, there are four gospels that tell us the story of Jesus' life. There's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which tend to be <clears throat> pretty much similar uh, because the material that is shared and the, and the way that it's shared is, is uh, very similar in those three. But the Gospel of John is, is a different uh, way of looking at the life of Jesus. It focuses more on Jesus' uh, individual relationships with uh, certain individuals. We'll hear those stories a little bit more fully. We also will experience um, how Jesus saw himself you know, through these I am statements, like light of the world, as Rod and Doris so uh, wonderfully shared with us earlier today. And some of these other images that, that give us a more... Uh, quality of life, a more spiritual experience of Jesus. Uh, the other Gospels also do wonderful ways of telling us parables and stories, but John does it in a, in a unique way, and I think it'll be helpful for us as uh, followers and disciples of Christ to, to travel through the Gospel of John this summer. This Gospel uh, helps us to uh, recognize more powerfully how Jesus has come to us in human form. And in fact, it begins that way in the first chapter, uh, which we didn't read, but the prologue of John is completely different than the other Gospels. Now, in Matthew, we get a genealogy because, you know, Matthew wanted uh, the Israelite people to know that Jesus was in the, is the lineage of the Jewish people. We know in Mark, we start with John the Baptist, the witness of John the Baptist as Jesus as the one who has come. In Luke, we have the stories of the birth narratives of Jesus. But in the Gospel of John, John takes us back to the beginning of creation. He says uh, that, that Jesus was with God when God created the world. And that Jesus, as a form of God, came to earth in human form. The logos is the word. That's the translation, the word has come and lived among us. It's kind of hard to fathom that, isn't it? Just get your head around the fact that God, the powerful, all-loving, all-knowing God, comes to live among us, comes to live the human experience. That's how the Gospel of John begins. Then we, we meet John the Baptist, who is uh, Jesus' cousin. Comes a time of baptism, and then we come to our passage today where it begins with John the Baptist saying to two of his disciples, look, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Lamb of God. As to say that I'm not the one you should be following, but pointing, pointing these two disciples, and one of them was Andrew, towards Jesus. So, you know, really the first two chapters of the Gospel of John begin to help us Understand the question, who is Jesus? Who is this Jesus? Who is Jesus for you and for me? And you know what's interesting is when you read it and you see in this particular material that we read, the, the scripture itself, it gave a bunch of titles to Jesus. It gave the title of rabbi, teacher, where are you staying? It gave us the image and the picture of uh, King of Israel, the Son of Man. We saw and read about how Jesus is the Messiah. 
There's all these different descriptions and names for Jesus just in this particular passage we read. There's at least six or seven. It's because each of us in our own lives, much like the disciples, have our own individual experience of Jesus. For some of us, Jesus is a teacher, a rabbi. For some of us, or hopefully all of us, Jesus is the Son of God, come to live among us. For some of us, God is, or Jesus is a Savior, the Messiah who's come to save us in our lives. Each of us has our own individual experience of how Jesus comes into our hearts and lives. Much like what we see with Andrew and Philip and Peter, and uh, as we read Nathaniel as well. It's interesting that <clears throat> who is Jesus is the place where we all should begin in our own lives. Reminding us ourselves of that question, who is Jesus for me? How do I understand Jesus? How do I experience Jesus in my heart and life? Do I see Jesus as a teacher, as my friend? Do I see my Jesus as the one who has saved my life? We each come to that identity of answering that question, who is Jesus, much like we read today. It's interesting also that in this passage it talks about how when John the Baptist <coughs> said to Andrew, there goes the Lamb of God, and then so Andrew and his friend <coughs> go to speak to Jesus, and then after they speak with Jesus, they go, Andrew immediately goes to his brother Peter and says, Peter, come and see. I've met the one. He's the one. He's the one of God who has been promised for so many years. He's here. And so then Peter comes over. And then we see Jesus calls Philip. And then Philip talks to Nathaniel. Do you see a pattern here? The pattern is we're inviting people to come and see and meet Jesus. That is our journey as Christian people. Not only to answer the question, well, who is Jesus for me? But then we take the next step and invite others to come on the journey with us. Come with us to journey to see Jesus. Come and see. Come and see. And you notice there, there it seems to me through this scripture that they're excited about that. It wasn't this, well, you know, we, we've met this person. Would you, would you like to just come along maybe? No, it's, there's a sense of urgency and energy about inviting others to come and see Jesus. Come and meet Jesus. I mean, we notice Nathaniel says, well, who is, you know, anything good come from Nazareth? You know, he wasn't too sure. You know, he liked, he trusted Philip, but he wasn't sure Philip was right about this particular Jesus. And, and so he, he even says, anything good comes from Nazareth? Come and see, come and see. And so when he meets Jesus, Jesus said, I see a man who's got spiritual depth in his life. How did you know that? How did you know that? You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. He says it immediately. Come and see. Come and see. She was an elderly woman in the community that would come to their church every once in a while, and she was filled with the Spirit. And the church normally was a very staid church. You know, they didn't want to uh, have too much enthusiasm in their worship. And this woman uh, would come and she would, while the preacher would be preaching, she would say amen and hallelujah and raise her hands. And, you know, everybody would kind of look at her like, oh, come on, you know, why are you running on our worship service with all this activity? And so the elders got together and thought, you know what, we need to help her kind of know that we really, you know, it's kind of unnerving for us when you do that. And so she uh, came to the door and the elders came to her and said, you know what, we want to give you some presents. We want to give you some blankets for the winter because uh, we know you would need them. And so if you take these blankets, then, you know, in the worship service, try not to, you know, get too excited, okay? And she said, oh, yeah, because she really needed the blankets. And so she took the blankets and she sat in the worship service in the front row and the preacher that day was really preaching a, a great sermon and she, you could tell she was holding it in because, you know, she really wanted to keep these blankets and finally, at, it got to a point where she just couldn't stand it anymore, and she stood up, and she said, blankets or no blankets, amen, preacher. Blankets or no blankets, amen, preacher. You know, sometimes I think we lose the enthusiasm of the power of Jesus that lives in our lives. 
We somewhat take it for granted, I think. Who is Jesus for you? Who is Jesus in our lives? Think about those moments when somebody invited you to come and see. Was it a Sunday school teacher? Was it your grandparents? Was it a pastor? Think through your mind. Who was the one that said, come, come and see Jesus? Because that's a critical part of what does it mean to be a disciple of Christ. And to do that with a sense of enthusiasm and a richness of knowing deep in our hearts that we have experienced the power of Jesus in our lives. Lastly, Jesus says in this passage, you thought you just saw something special now? Wait and see. Wait and see. And so those disciples that day followed Jesus for the next three years. They followed and, and learned from him about what does it mean and to experience the richness of God's love in their lives. It really moved from a moment of just having a conversation about Jesus to really telling the story of Jesus, having that conversation with other folks. That's what it means to be a disciple of Christ, friends. It's not something that's just private for us alone. We are to invite others to come and see. We're to invite others to come and see Jesus. And then on that journey, also make ourselves grow deeper and more uh, filled with the Holy Spirit of God and Jesus Christ. Because when we answer the question, who is Jesus for us? We all have a story. We all have a moment that we can say, well, Jesus is my friend because of this. Or Jesus is my Savior because of this experience that happened to me. Jesus is the one I love who loves me. Just as we sang earlier, Jesus loves me, this I know. And we share that story in a very, very non-threatening way because it's our experience. It's our experience of encountering the living God, the one who has come to be the word of God in human flesh. Jesus is the best picture we have of God. And, and so our journey this summer is to, to deepen our walk with Jesus to hear how he speaks to the woman at the well, how he speaks to Nicodemus, the Jewish leader, how he speaks to the woman caught in adultery. All of these stories are the stories that help us encounter Jesus in our lives and remind us of those places where we have encountered Jesus in our lives. Tony Campolo tells a story about Miss Thompson. Miss Thompson is a fifth grade school teacher and little Teddy had been in that elementary school for a while. He'd come from a pretty dysfunctional situation. It was never very good, and, you know, the word spread. You know how it is. Sometimes a child's kind of designated and comes through each class, and he didn't do very well, and they kept kind of passing him on. In the third grade, Teddy's mother died, and after that, his dad didn't really care about <coughs> his schoolwork. And, and so when he came to fifth grade, Miss Thompson kind of bought into that, and and uh, she, was, she said, you know, she just didn't really like Teddy, even though she tried to love all the children. She, she set, felt kind of good giving him an F every once in a while and, until Christmas came. And at Christmas, Teddy, you know, all the kids brought Christmas presents to the teacher. And Teddy brought a present that was kind of wrapped, not really great, but it was wrapped. And so when she opened it up, uh, there was some kind of a small little bottle of cheap perfume and a a bracelet that was missing some of the, the jewelry beads, but it was a, a bracelet. And I think Miss Thompson all of a sudden realized, this is his mom's, and he gave it to me. And at first the class kind of looked at it like, wow. But then she put the bracelet on, she said, isn't this the most beautiful bracelet you've ever seen? And, oh, Teddy, thank you so much for this perfume. I, I will wear it every day. And you could see Teddy move from kind of this downcast to this really feeling good about himself and the rest of the class kind of ooh and odd when she made a big deal out of it well that was a moment of change for not only teddy but also for miss thompson and from that <clears throat> moment on she poured herself into teddy and his grades got better uh, he got later on graduated from high school number two in his class uh, later on, he graduated uh, valedictorian of his, of his class in college, and he went on to be a medical doctor. And when 
he was getting married. His father had died. His mother had died. And he said, you're the only family I have, Miss Thompson. And so he invited Miss Thompson to come and be at the wedding and sit with the family. Because she was his family. She had encouraged him and strengthened him through that life. Miss Thompson remembers and says that we are all to invite Jesus to come and help us see See the possibilities and the gift of eternal life that comes from Christ. But also we're inviting people to come and see so that that transforming power of Jesus Christ can live in others. So my challenge to you today is to think about, is there somebody in your world? Is there a grandchild, a neighbor, a neighbor child, a second cousin, somebody who you know doesn't really experience and know God in their life. Begin to pray for them. Begin to pray for them and then open yourself to the Spirit's leading that when you can tell your story about how you had come and saw Jesus in your life. May that be our journey as we begin together looking at the Gospel of John. Beginning to answer the question for who is Jesus for me recalling the stories and the moments where we've encountered Jesus in our lives and then being able to share that story. Jesus is my friend. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is the one who loves me. Jesus is the one who rescued me. Jesus is the one who helps me to know God fully in my heart and life. Accept that challenge. Think of that person right now. Who is that person for you? Pray for them. Tell them the story. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the power of your word. For you are literally the word of God given to us. Help us as we have come and seen you work in our lives that we may invite others to more than a conversation but that we may bear witness to you in our lives. Help us, blankets or no blankets, to praise you each day. For we ask this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen.